am Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and I want to welcome you to my channel. Today we are going to make the buttered popcorn hat with the pom-pom. And I'm going to show you how to do this. This is an intermediate project. However, if you're a beginner or a confident beginner and you know the basic crochet stitches, I believe this video will show you everything you need to know to accomplish this project. If you're the first time visitor to my channel, I want to first of all say welcome. And if you could please hit that subscribe button, that would be great. And if you could hit the thumbs up, if you like the project, that would really bless me. Hit that notification bell if you want to receive further notifications. And I've got a lot of really fun stuff lined up coming your way very soon. All right, well, let me show you what you're going to need. For this yarn, I'm going to be using one scan of Brooklyn Boy Knits Knitology yarn. This is by Knit Crate. If you're interested in checking out, there is an affiliate link in the video description below. The yarn I'm going to be using is hand dyed. It is 100% super washed merino wool and it's approximately 225 yards and this colorway is called Golden Lion. Now for those of you who don't have Knit Crate yarn available, I'm going to offer another um, excellent substitute. This is a 100% acrylic yarn by Paintbox. It's much more cost effective for those of you where that's a concern and I believe the colorway of this is just as fabulous. Um, and this scan has 184 meters or 201 yards. You're also going to need a couple of crochet hooks and the sizes that I'm recommending, although do be sure to check your gauge, I'm going to be using a size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeters and I'm also going to use a 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter crochet hook. And I'll say up front, we're going to be using this for the non-popcorn stitches, but when you go to the popcorns, make sure that you do change to the larger size hook. And some other incidentals that are optional, should you decide to add a pom-pom, I'm recommending that you have a pom-pom. Let me show you the one that I have has a little elastic ring, which makes it very easy to attach with a button that is sewn to the inside of the hat. So if you decide to use a pom-pom, you're going to need a button and a needle and some sewing thread to sew on the button. Okay, as always, I'm also recommending that you have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle handy for hiding loose ends. Okay, and one more thing. You're gonna need a tape measure of some sort so that you can measure to make sure that you're gonna get the proper gauge since this is an item which size is sort of important. Okay, let's go ahead and start. To begin, we are using the smaller size hook, which in my case is the J or 10 or 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. And we're gonna start with our slip knot as always. And we're going to chain 26 chains. And you want to chain these a little on the looser side, um, not too loose, but not too tight so that we're able to work our first row in this chain. For row one, we are going to start in the second chain from the hook, one, two, and we are going to single crochet in each stitch across. So go ahead and work single crochets at the end of this row. You should have a total of 25 single crochets. At the end of the row, again, you should have 25 single crochets. The chains are not going to be counted, or the turning chains will not count as stitches in this work. Okay, so now, also notice that it might have a little bit of a curl in it. Don't worry about that. The next row or two should take that right out. For row number two, we're going to work something called the low front ridge. And when we do that is we chain one. And starting in the next stitch, we're going to skip this first stitch because I'll, I'll show you why in just a second. But we're just going to work in the front loop only and we're going to work a slip stitch. Just like this, slip, stitch, slip, stitch. Now the reason why we skip that first stitch is because that chain one we did, it lays evenly right in front of that first stitch. If you work that first stitch, it's not it's not a deal breaker or anything, but it will leave a little bit of a bulkiness on the end. And by starting in the second stitch, it eliminates that. And this is the good part too. This is not going to change our stitch count as we work across because 
the stitch count that's going to be continued in matter is what we do in the next row. So even though we are only going to have 24 slip stitches across, we are going to bring that stitch count back to 25 on the next row that really counts and continues our stitch count, which should pretty much remain consistent um, while we work the next several rows. So go ahead and finish this all the way across. After working this all the way across, we're going to turn, chain one, and now this is a little bit tricky but not impossible. We're going to work in the remaining loop from that row one of single crochets. And the first one is right here. Make sure we don't skip that particular loop or you will be off by one count. Okay, so we're going to single crochet in each remaining loop. Hopefully by me doing this right there, you'll be able to see where these loops are. Okay, so go ahead and work those single crochets all the way across the row. You should have a total of 25 at the end of this row and make sure that you do have 25. It's very important as we go forward for our stitch count. After working those single crochets all the way across, we're going to turn and let's take a look at the texture that we created. You should have this raised line, which looks really cool with this variegated yarn. Um, this line, which is that low front ridge, which is going to help frame the next stitch that we're going to work. The next stitch we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to skip the first three stitches, one, two, three, and we're going to work a treble crochet in the next stitch. So skip one, two, three, and then the next stitch we're going to work a treble crochet, just like that, working through both loops now. Now working behind this treble crochet, we're going to work in the three stitches that we skipped. Sometimes if you just pull this down, and pull this back, you can see those three stitches clearly. Starting with that first stitch, we're going to work double crochets in those three stitches. One, two, and three. And this is what we're going to do all the way across. I'll do it with you a couple times. Skip through the next three stitches. Now these are the stitches that we haven't used yet. One, two, three, and then work a treble crochet in that next stitch. And then working behind this stitch, we're going to double crochet in these three stitches. So we pull that stitch back and just work those three stitches. One, two, three. Those of you who follow me regularly on my channel know that we are working the arrow stitch and this is one of my favorite texturized stitches. Okay, so we're going to do that again. Skip three, one, two, three, and treble crochet in that next stitch working behind that treble crochet. We're going to work double crochets. This is slightly shorter than a treble crochet. Work them in those three stitches behind. So go ahead and work that across the rest of the row and I will show you how to end this row. At the end of this row, we have one stitch left and we're just going to work a double crochet in that last space. Now let's go ahead and just take a look at what we have. We should have six arrows begun. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we're ready to work row number two and this is the, with the back side facing. We're going to chain two and we're going to skip the next three stitches, actually four stitches if you count this stitch. We are not going to work in this double crochet. We're going to skip the next three stitches and we're going to work a treble crochet in the next stitch, which also happens to be the top of that treble crochet from the last row. So we work a treble crochet in that stitch. And now working in front of this stitch, we're going to work a double crochet in each of the stitches that we skipped. So make sure we work those in front when the back side is facing you. 
one in each of those stitches. And that is going to be the repeat that we do all the way across. We're going to skip the next three stitches and then working in the top of that treble crochet, work a treble crochet. And then working in front of that treble crochet, work one double crochet in each of the three skipped stitches. One, two, three. I'll do this one more time because I know many of you are new to my channel. And if you are brand new to the channel, if you could please hit that subscribe button, that would be great because that way you won't miss any of the other new things coming your way. Okay, go ahead and skip these three stitches and treble crochet in that next stitch. Working in front of that treble crochet, we're going to double crochet in each of the three skipped stitches, assuming I can get the hook in the right place. There we go. And one more thing, I may be going a little too fast for some of you, and if I do, I apologize. But one thing I like to do in my newer videos is to tell you how you can slow me down. Um, once you pause the video, you'll see a little icon here if you're watching this on a computer. If you're watching the left-hand version, it'll be on this side. It looks like a little gear. You just click on that and it will bring up a menu where you can actually change the speed playback of the video. And this actually works for any of the videos on YouTube. Now, if you are watching me from a cell phone up in the right hand quarter, there are three vertical dots, dot, dot, dot on the left hand side or the left hand version. It will be on this side. If you click on that, it does the same thing. It brings up the playback speed menu and you can select um, a slower speed. If you find you're getting really bored with my video and you want to speed it up, you can actually do that as well. So I hope that serves you. Okay, now we're going to um, do this one more time. Skip the next three, treble crochet, and that treble crochet working in front of that treble. Go ahead and double crochet in those three skipped stitches. I'm going to go ahead and um, finish up this row, and I will show you how to end it. After working that all the way across the row, go ahead and work a double crochet in that chain two turning space right there. Okay, now we're ready to turn. And let's take a look at what we have. You can clearly see, hopefully clearly see the arrow of your work. Okay, now we need to work one more row. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna work a single crochet in each stitch across. So go ahead and finish that row. You should have 25 single crochets once you finish that row. At the end of that row, this is what you should have. And we're going to do that one more time. We're going to turn, chain one, and we are going to single crochet in each stitch across. So we're going to have two rows of single crochet after those two rows of arrow stitch. So go ahead and finish that stitch and then I will show you what to do next. Okay, now we're about to begin row number eight, which is going to be the same as rows two and three that we worked down here with the low front ridge. Chain one, and we're going to skip that first stitch and working only in the front loop, just slip stitch your way all the way across the row, slip stitch in each stitch across. After working those slip stitches all the way across, just like we did down below, we're going to chain one and we're going to work in that remaining loop. Let me go ahead and show you. You see where that single crochet is? And we're just going to work a single crochet in each remaining loop. So go ahead and work those single crochets all the way across. And just to note, just to note that we still have 25 stitches across. We would have had 24 slip stitches in the last row, as I mentioned before, but we're going to have 25 single crochets because that this is the row that really matters continuing forward with our stitch count. This is what you should have at the end of that row. So now it's time to turn. And now, now we are ready to begin the popcorn rows, but before we do that, there's something very important. You need to change to the larger size hooks. I'm bumping up to a K 
or 10.5 or 6.50 millimeter crochet hook. And I just wanted to add a word about this. This is not a paid endorsement, but I do have an affiliate link should you be interested in purchasing some of these. These are actually my personal favorite. I, I do get a lot of questions about these. That's why I'm taking a minute to tell you about them. Um, I've used these for probably half a century um, without the handle, of course. That's kind of a new addition, which really makes it um, even nicer than what they were. Um, these are also very cost effective, um, averaging between um, two ninety nine and maybe maybe three dollars fifty cents. I mean something in that ballpark in U S dollars for the purchase of one of these, which is very reasonable. I'm going to include an Amazon affiliate link in the video description below. Should you be interested in checking these out and and seeing if they're available in your area? Now for the popcorn, we're going to chain one. We are going to single crochet in that first stitch chain one, skip the next stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to work a popcorn, which is four single crochets worked in the same place or in the same stitch. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four single crochets. Now I'm going to pull up the loop and I'm going to reinsert my hook in that very first stitch that very first popcorn that was crocheted. Then I'm going to grab the loop from the last popcorn and then pull it through and then give it a chain. Now don't give this chain, don't make this chain too tight because you're going to be working in that chain on the next row. Okay, now we're going to skip the next stitch here and then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. And that is going to be our repeat. Chain one skip the next stitch and then work a popcorn in that next stitch, which is four single crochets worked in the same stitch. Pull up that loop, put the hook in that first stitch, grab the loop from the last stitch and pull it through and give it a chain. And notice that they are popping forward. Um, sometimes people have trouble with them popping in the wrong direction. Well, if that's the case, make sure that you just put your finger behind there and make sure that they protrude on the front side. Okay, now we skip the next stitch and a single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and then a popcorn in the next stitch. One, two, three, four single crochets, pull up a loop, insert into that first of the four stitches, pull the loop from that last one and pull it through and give it a chain. Skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. So this is what you're going to do all the way across the row. I will show you how to end this row. After working this all the way across, we just continue in the pattern by skipping the next stitch and single crochet in that last stitch. So this is what you should have. You should have six popcorn. There should be seven single crochets and you should have chain one spaces between each of those stitches. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn with the back side facing. We're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet in that first single crochet and then we're going to single crochet right in the top of that popcorn, that chain one. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in this chain one space, which is in between the single crochet and the popcorn. This is the row where folks tend to go astray on. So this is very important. Chain one, skip the single crochet and we're going to single crochet in the top of the next popcorn. Chain one, single crochet in between the popcorn. There's a chain one space here in between the single crochet and the popcorn right there. Chain one and single crochet in the top of that next popcorn. Notice that we, we skipped this single crochet here. Chain one, single crochet in between the popcorn and the single crochet. So we're basically single crocheting 
in the chain one spaces as we move across this row. I'm just going to finish this with you because this can be a very problematic row. Chain one, single crochet in the top of that popcorn. Chain one, okay, we're going to single crochet in this chain one space between the popcorn and the single crochet. Skip the single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the top of that popcorn. Chain one, see how fast this row goes once you understand it though? Single crochet in that chain one space, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in top of that popcorn. Chain one, single crochet in that next chain one space, and then single crochet in that last single crochet, just like that. And this is what it should look like with the back side facing. Okay, now we're going to turn and this is what it looks like on the front side. Now we're ready to work row three of the popcorn stitch. We're going to work a chain one. We're gonna single crochet in that first single crochet. Chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space. Notice that we skipped this first, or actually, yeah, the second actually single crochet, we skipped that. Chain one. Now this is where we begin the popcorn again, and notice that we are gonna be alternating them in between the popcorn two rows down. In that chain one space, we're gonna work a popcorn, which again, four single crochets, just like we worked them before. Pull up a loop, insert the hook into that first stitch, grab that loop and pull it through, and chain one, another popcorn made. So now we're going to single crochet in the next chain one space, just like that. Notice that we don't add an extra stitch here. We don't add a second chain, but just the chain that closed the popcorn is sufficient. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, work a popcorn in that next chain one space. So after we work those four single crochets, pull up a loop and pull that through just like we've been doing. Chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, work another popcorn. Oops, helps to put the hook in the loop. There we go. And Go ahead and grab that loop, pull it through, chain one. Skip the next single crochet, single crochet in that chain one space. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, popcorn. One, two, three, four. Pull up the loop and pull it on through and give it a chain and notice how the popcorns are alternating. That's very important. Skip the stitch, the single crochet, single crochet in the next space. And I'm just going to go ahead and take you to the end of this row. Okay. After we do that, chain one, skip this single crochet and work another popcorn in that space. And chain one. Skip the single crochet, single crochet in that next space. Chain one, skip this single crochet, and then work a single crochet in that last stitch. And so this is what you should have after four, no, three rows, one, two, three rows of the popcorn. Now let's work the next row which is actually a repeat of the second row. We chain one, we've turned, single crochet in that first stitch, single crochet in that first chain one space. Now we chain one, skip the single crochet, and single crochet in the top of that popcorn. Chain one, and single crochet 
in that next chain one space, which is in between the popcorn and the single crochet. Chain one, skip that single crochet and work the next single crochet in the top of the popcorn, just like we did before. So go ahead and um, work that all the way across the row. At the end of the row, just work a single crochet in that last stitch and notice that you do not have a, a, a chain one in between these two stitches. Okay, so let's turn around and see what we have. This is what you have at the end of four rows of popcorn. Now for the next row of popcorn, it's going to be similar to this row down here with the exception that we're working them now in the chain one spaces instead of working in single crochets. So let's go ahead, we've chained one, single crochet in the first stitch, chain one, and we're gonna work, we're gonna skip the single crochet and we're gonna work a popcorn in this chain one. We work our four single crochets, pull up a loop, and pull it through the first like we've been doing, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in that chain one space, chain one, and popcorn in the next chain one space. Pull up a loop. Give it a chain, skip the next single crochet, single crochet in that chain one space. So go ahead and work that across the row, similarly like we did with this. Again, we're working in the chain one spaces, and do make sure that the popcorns are alternating properly. Now we're ready to begin row number six. We're going to single crochet in that first stitch and then single crochet in that next chain one, which is the top of the popcorn. Now we begin our chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one and single crochet in the next chain one space. Notice that we've skipped that single crochet. This is what we're doing all the way across. This is just like row number two of the popcorn single crochet in that next chain one space, chain one, and single crochet in the next chain one space, which is on top of that popcorn. I'm just gonna work this one all the way across with you because it's a very quick row, but it can, as like I said before, it can be very tricky and can cause issues in the following rows if it's not worked properly. And hopefully the tension that you're getting with the larger hook is even when compared to the rows that we worked with the arrow stitch. Mine's coming out quite well. Um, if you did not change the hook, you may see some pulling in between the stitches. So now we go to the end. There's one more chain one space there. And then we single crochet in that last single crochet. Now we're gonna turn. Let's take another look. Now we're ready to work another row, just like row number three down here. Go ahead and chain one, single crochet in that first stitch, chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in that chain one space, chain one, now we're ready for the popcorn. Popcorn in the next stitch, or actually the chain one space, which is also a stitch and pull that loop through and give it a chain. And then skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, popcorn in the next space. Pull up a loop. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and work this to the end of the row and I'll show you how this row ends. At the end of this row, we have chained one, skip the next stitch, and then single crochet in that last stitch. Now we're ready. This is what you should have after working seven rows of the popcorn stitch, which brings you to row number 16 and we're about to work row number 17, which that numbering system has to do with the overall 
pattern of what we've just worked. I've just been numbering the rows individually for you for the popcorn just to try to help you um, understand that better. So let's go ahead and turn. And the most important thing we need to do now is switch back to our smaller hook. I'm going back downsizing to the size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter crochet hook. If you don't do that, then the next section you work is going to be way too wide. Okay, so go ahead, chain one. And now we are only gonna work in the chain one spaces across. We're gonna work two. Notice that we're gonna skip the first stitch here. We're gonna work two single crochets in that first chain one space. Two single crochets in that chain one on the top of that popcorn. And then two single crochets in the next chain one space. And then two in the popcorn etc. I'm going to go ahead and work this with you all the way across because again it's going to be a very, these are very short rows. I'm hoping you're enjoying that and um, learning some new stitches in the process or becoming acquainted with some old friends, you know, as far as the stitches go. Okay, so just a few more stitches here. Notice that I'm working only in the chain one spaces and again if you need to slow me down you know what to do. Okay, now this is where you can get tripped up a little bit. This is two in that chain one space. And let's see, is there a chain one? Yeah, there is a chain one space here as well. And then we're going to work a single crochet in that last single crochet. And it's really important that we do a stitch count at this point because this should be bringing us back to the 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. It's very important that you have 25 stitches right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an assignment. So now you're going to need to repeat rows two, which starts with the low front ridge, through row 17, which was the row to discontinue the popcorn that we just worked. Work those rows three more times and then I will show you what I have. After working three more repeats of the popcorn and the arrow and the low front ridge rows, rows 2 through 17, this is what you should have. Now the piece that I'm showing you is going to be joined into a tube which is going to make the hat. Of course we're going to have the front side facing inward as we do this but the entire length of this is 19 inches long and it is approximately 6 inches wide. Okay, so now we are going to work again, make sure that you put the front side of this facing inward and we're going to still be using our J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter crochet hook and we are going to we're going to turn and what we're going to do next is we are going to chain one and we are going to slip stitch these ends together. So start with the foundation row in front of you, put your hook through there and through the first stitch of the current row and we're going to work a slip stitch and go into the next stitch and the next stitch, slip stitch and the next stitch, slip stitch and we're going to work this all the way across. If you're not sure where to put your hook, look where the stitch on the foundation row was and we're going to put our hook through there and we're going to be essentially crocheting over those other two strands from that foundation stitch. Okay, so go ahead and work this all the way across. After having worked the slip stitch all the way across, it should look like this. Now we're going to pull this up a little bit on the loop. I am going to turn this right side out. Notice that I did not fasten off here because we're going to continue working the crown, which is the top part of the hat. Okay, 
put our hook back in. We're going to chain one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work single crochets all the way around the top of the hat. We're going to work 60 single crochets. Now one thing you can do is you can put a stitch marker here. I'm just going to mark it with the needle for now. And this is going to mark the halfway point around the hat for me. And so I know from this point to where the needle is or where that low front ridge begins on the other side of that arrow, I should have a total of approximately 30 stitches because that would be the halfway point. And we're just going to work the single crochets in the row ends. Now it's not unusual to have to work this a couple of times to get the number just right. Um, but it is time well spent. So go ahead and work evenly around and work those 60 stitches all the way around the top of the hat. Now that I have worked the first 30 stitches around the top, it does work out to approximately one stitch per row end. So it does work out rather easily. So go ahead and work those 60 stitches all the way around. After working those 60 stitches all the way around, go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Now we're going to chain one and we are going to work single crochet decreases all the way around. So we're going to take our stitch count of 60 in this round and it's going to decrease to 30 over the next round. And this is the way we work those single crochet decreases. Insert, pull up a loop, insert, hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. That's a single crochet decrease. Stick the hook in the next stitch, and the next stitch. So I have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. That's another decrease. So we're going to work this decrease, single crochet decrease, all the way around the top of the hat. This is going to start constricting the top of the hat, making it much smaller for the crown. After working those single crochet decreases all the way around, join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet decrease of the round. Chain one. Notice that I am not turning at the end of these rounds too. I'm keeping the front side facing. Okay, now we are going to single crochet in each stitch around and you will have 30 single crochets at the end of this round. So go ahead and work that. At the end of round three, we join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Go ahead and give that a chain. Now for round four, we're going to work alternating single crochet and then work a single crochet decrease all the way around. Single crochet and then a single crochet decrease. So go ahead and work that. At the end of that round, we join with a slip stitch, just like that. Chain one. Now to work the last two rounds, rounds five and six, they are simply going to be decreases all the way around. So for round five, we're going to work 10 decreases. So go ahead and work those all the way around. After working those 10 decreases, join with a slip stitch. And we have one more round. Let's show you where we are. One more round. We're going to work five decreases. I'll go ahead and work these with you. That's two. three, whoops, let's try that again, four, and five. Okay, now we are going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Okay, give it a tug there. 
give it a chain, give it a tug. Now we're going to get our scissors and we're going to cut a very nice long chain. Okay, a nice long chain because we're going to use this to close up the top area once we finish this. Okay, and go ahead and pull that on through. So let's take a look at the crown. And you can see the top has a little bit of a hole here and we're going to close this up in just a minute. But before we do, we are going to put a button on the inside of the hat. This is for those who would like a pom-pom. So we're going to actually turn this right side out or inside out again and I'm going to get my supplies so I can sew a button on the inside. So now that we're getting ready to sew the button on, you just want to keep a reference as to where the hole is because that's where the um, little tab to the pom-pom is going to go. So I'm going to set it, just offset a bit to the hole and I'm going to sew this button into place. And you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. But I'm going to go ahead and sew my button in place and then I will get back to you. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to make the top of this hat a little bit smaller. Otherwise, the button will seep through when you attach the pom-pom and it'll come off. So you want to make that top hole a little bit smaller. And we do this by just taking the thread and I'm just going to go in and out the window around each of these stitches just like this okay and then just give it a couple give it a knot like this and that, that actually should be plenty and I'm actually going to run it under I'm going to run it down here, just run it under a few of these stitches just to kind of secure the thread. And that should be fine. And then give it a little clip very carefully. Top. Now we're going to add the pom-pom to this design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my hook in here and I'm going to stick it up through that hole that we just closed and I'm going to hook on the little elastic. I'm going to pull this through and this is how you can reattach the pom-pom after washing, you know, after washing the hat and that way you can preserve the pom-pom through the washings. All right. So Go ahead. Ugh, this is not as easy as it looks. Ugh, okay, there we go. It's a little bit taut, but that's good because you don't want the pom-pom to come off. So now that pom-pom is nice and firmly attached. And you can kind of fluff these up a little bit. This has been in a box in storage. So yeah, that will fluff up. There we go. Now we're going to work on the bottom ribbing. Okay, so we are going to do something similar like we just did on the, the crown, and that is we're going to have to work another 60 stitches evenly around the bottom. Let me go ahead and start that right with the slip knot. And we are going to attach this to the bottom, or to the other side. So I'm going to work a single crochet I'm actually going to work over this strand as I go. And we're going to work 60 single crochets around the bottom or uh, along the edging here all the way around. And you can do it in the same way that we just did on the crown. So go ahead and work 60 single crochets around. At the end of this round, join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug because I don't want to mistake this join for a stitch. I'm going to chain two. This does not count as a stitch and I'm going to work double crochets all the way around. 
So go ahead and work a double crochet in each stitch around the bottom of the hat. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first double crochet of the round, chain two, and now we're going to work front and back post double crochets. If you've never worked it, it's just like working a double crochet, with the only exception is where you put your hook. The hook is going to go not in the top, but around the body of the stitch in the front door, around the back of the hook, and then it's going to come out the side door, just like this, and then you complete the double crochet as you normally would. For a back post double crochet, you put your hook from the back, you're coming in the back door, around the front, and then out the back door again. Pull up a loop, and you complete the double crochet as you normally would. Go into front door with the front post double crochet, and then up, come in the back door. You're giving the, the stitch a belt kind of around its waist, not going through the top loops. So go ahead and work this alternating with the front post double crochet followed by the back post double crochet all the way around the hat. And this is what we call ribbing or, or what I like to call post ribbing. So go ahead and work that all the way around your hat. At the end of the round, we work that last back post double crochet and then join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Chain two and we're going to do that again. Front post, double crochet over the front post and you can see it now, the back post over the back post. Front post over the front post and back post over the back post and we're going to work that all the way around again. After working this all the way around, I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Now what you can do is, is put a little chain here in the tug and give your hat a try to see if you like it with this many rounds of ribbing. You have the round of single crochet plus three rounds with the um, double crochet ribbing. Now if you like it like this, go ahead and fasten off and hide your loose end. I for one am going to actually add one more round of, of this um, ribbing. So chain two and work one more round with the front post and back post double crochet because I just want my hat to come down a little bit lower. So this is again where you can choose how you want to finish this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish with one more round and then I will show you how to fasten off. After working that all the way around again, join with a slip stitch, give it a tug and give it a chain and I'm going to give it a nice generous strand here. Pull it on through and I'm going to give you a a one minute tutorial on how to hide a loose strand. Many of you have probably seen this before, but just for those of you who are new, brand new to my channel and have not seen this, we're going to just thread our thread into that yarn needle and we're going to bring this stitch down into the work just like this, just weaving it in. And notice that I'm doing it on the back side because we don't want this to show if we can help it. And bring that down. And that way that knot is hidden. And then if we bring it back up again through some more strands, it's going to give us some more resistance to just keep it from, you know, pulling out and becoming a problem. Okay, so I think that's probably good. And we'll pull it up and give it pull back on that just a bit. And Give it a clip and there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed making this butter popcorn hat with me today. If you did, if you could just please hit that thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so that you don't miss any of the new offerings I have coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.